Hi everyone, welcome back to the garden. It's a grey, windy, but definitely mild early March day today. As you can see behind me, my fat hydroponica spider's web, the one that I bought in my last video, that is in the ground, adding some fantastic evergreen interest to this colourful, beautifully green part of the garden. But today it's all about looking forwards to the big leaf plants that really make my garden what it is in summer. Yes, I'm unwrapping a couple of them. Firstly, the Gunra Manicata or Gunra Cryptica. We won't go into that today. And then secondly, the Musa Baju. And thirdly, one plant that's been a bit of an experiment for me, Musa Tibet. This previous winter has been its first winter outside in the garden with only fleece covering. So we'll see how well it's done. And for a bit of context, this winter has generally been quite mild, but there was a cold spell before Christmas, down to about minus five, there was some snow as well. So certainly not the mildest winter, but definitely, hopefully, not too testing for some of these amazing big leaf plants. So let's get started. But before we get into the practicalities of unwrapping these plants, finding out whether my winter experiments have actually worked or not, let's answer the question of when you unwrap these plants, or rather, when I unwrap them. Because every garden's different. What you do in the south of the country might be completely different to what you do up here in North Lincolnshire. There's people up in Newcastle and beyond who maybe do it later still. But for me personally, Gunra manicata, or Cryptica, as it's now correctly called, that's a plant which likes to get growing early on in the season. Personally, I walked out the garden last month, late February, and saw a leaf pushing through the leafy teepee that had protected it for winter. So that's a plant that gets grown very early. It happens every year, but this year, I think with the mild weather, it's grown away even earlier than usual. So it's definitely a plant which tells you when it wants to be unwrapped. And right now is that time, because the leaves grow so rapidly and so huge that you really want to take off the protection for winter, whether that's fleece, the old leaves, or something different, to really let them unfurl and reach the full majestic size. But it is a frost tender plant when it comes to those new leaves. So if protecting them and having the most pristine, biggest leaves possible is a priority, then certainly keep fleece on hand for that. Now, when it comes to Musa Baju, this unsightly looking teepee behind me there, that's a plant which I know a lot of you probably don't even bother wrapping. Mature clumps, especially those in milder city locations, places further south than us here, you probably don't even need to wrap Musa Baju. And if I knew it was going to be a mild winter, I wouldn't wrap them here. But obviously, no one knows what the weather's going to do. So I usually wait until late March, early April, and then I unwrap them. That way, we're not going to get the deep cold that's going to cut the plants down to the ground. So you can, again, just keep some fleece on hand to protect them as and when you need to. But if you've actually full-on wrapped your moose of bananas, using an enclosure, packed straw in, put fleece over the top, if it's something that's going to be a faff to put back on, then I personally would leave them wrapped until maybe early to mid-April. By that point, you can see what the two-week forecast is, and then, you know, you're guaranteed home safe. Those plants are going to grow away again rapidly in the spring sunshine. But generally speaking, for most people, if you're willing to take a little bit of a risk, I think in March, if a two-week forecast looks good, as it does now, and there isn't a significant frost on the horizon, then just go for it. But keep a fleece bag handy just in case. So anyway, that's the when. Now let's look at whether these plants have actually come through winter all right. As I mentioned, it's far from the sunniest day here. The sun is trying though, and I think really that sums up this spring very well. We've had moments of beautiful brilliance, literally moments, and most of it has been quite dull and in some ways quite October-like really. But the difference as we head into March, it really is that you can start looking ahead. February is a month with real potential for cold, but March really for me is when things really start to begin. And speaking of beginning, whilst these gunner are here covered with the fleece, you can't see a lot going on. This one over here, it's definitely on its way. And you might have watched my videos from last year talking about how this gunner is very much taken over my jungle clearing. It's hard to imagine now looking across this expanse that the gunner does actually come out to about there but believe me it certainly will and this year it might be getting bigger and better still i say better but we'll see the first of these leaves punched its way through the old leaves protecting it a couple of weeks ago and as we're going away to see family for the weekend and there was a minus one degree c forecast i had to cover it with fleece i'm glad i did because those leaves look good now and ready to grow away and take over the garden again for another year so as you can see, the gunner definitely tells you when it wants to come out, and that time is now. So I'm outside with Remy, and today we'll have a look at the gunner. Remy's already wanting to rip the fleece off them, 
and see how big these rhizomes are and get an idea of what these plants will look like this year. So let's get started. You might then have watched my winter care for gunner video last autumn and seen me preparing this plant for winter. Well, essentially today we're doing the reverse. We're taking away these leaves that are used to protect this crown from deep cold. And we're gonna see just how well it survived the cold winter blast we've had. Aren't we Remy? Good boy. So first thing you'll notice, these beautiful stems, they're definitely a lot lighter than they were prior to winter. They've dried out now, which is quite amazing considering the weather, and they're certainly significantly lighter. So we'll put those down there. Those can go onto the bamboo for composting, or Remy's gonna run off with them more like. And then we just carefully peel these away. So there we are, the crown is unveiled. And as you can see, we've got one major crown at this side here. And then the rhizome's also splitting off over there. This is the plant that I actually split up last spring prior to the recent DEFRA announcement. And if the helicopters from DEFRA weren't busy circling overhead, I think Yorkshire Chris dobbed me in, I would certainly take those two off there and have some more plants to spread around my garden or other people's. But as that's now deeply irresponsible, I won't be doing that. But anyway, let's see the others and see how they've got on. But that really is a mighty plant. And just to give you some context again, I split this plant from the one behind me in early spring 2020. So when we came here, this was a small plant in a pot and it's grown into this magnificent beast, which clearly is defying the way that I want it to grow and just pointing itself right over my jungle clearing area. But anyway, it is what it is. They're a monstrous plant and I'm excited to see it grow this year. But anyway, let's look at the bigger ones. So it's now time to unwrap the bigger two and to be honest, I will be pleased to see the back of this fleece covering, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing just how big this one especially is this spring. So let's take this off first. That wind's picking up now. Forget everything I said about spring. When that wind gets going, it's definitely cold out here. Wow, and that one's already pushing through. I think these are gonna be some big plants this year. Remy, Remy, what's this? Oh, what's that? Wow. It's amazing just to see how much wildlife actually lives in these rotting down leaves it's just covered with millipedes, centipedes, all kinds of little bugs. Something to harry it to play with and no doubt try to eat in a few months time. Right. And I can see already this one is growing from the top. Like a volcano, it's erupting out and ready to take over this part of the garden again. There we go. What a plant to start with. Look at the size of it. The previous camera angle probably doesn't convey the scale of these beasts, but how about this? You can see just how big this rhizome is now. We've got one very clear crown heading off over there. That's the one that's definitely gonna shade out my jungle clearing area. But more importantly, look at that beast there. That's reaching up now. The actual rhizome itself is around two foot tall. Remy's found something. People do ask if a sausage dogs actually dig, and our two dachshunds don't usually, but Remy's clearly found something down there. Hopefully not a rhizome of a precious plant. We'll see. <laughs> but what a beast this gunner is going to be. As you can see, the old leaf stalks, they're rotting now. I'll try and zoom in there so you can see that they're an absolute haven for wood lice, millipedes, centipedes, and all kinds of other life. And it's a great reason really, plants like this, they show just how important decay is in the garden. So all the old leaves from these plants, I don't have a compost bin as such, but I directly use them on top of the soil. So around my tree ferns, around the bamboos, all the organic matter that isn't completely woody, and won't take years to die down, gets chucked straight on the soil, and believe it or not, it soon disappears. But wow, this plant really is gonna be absolutely phenomenal this year. 
I might have mentioned it on a previous video, but my gunner here came from a very significant, huge mother plant. So I'm really excited to see them continue to grow and to continue to take up even more of my precious garden space. But anyway, let's get on with the third. This one is another offset when we moved in, but it's one which, as you can probably see through there, has clearly got ambitions to race towards that sky very, very quickly. Remy, what are you doing? <gasps> what is it? What are you doing? No, on a mission. So as Remy busily shreds down the leaf stalks there to make easier composting material, let's look at the third one. So this here was one of the small gunnera, but now small certainly isn't the word. As you can see, it's got a main growing crown there. Once again, pointing off in just the wrong direction. I think it's actually because here in our garden, although in theory, south is that way and west is that way, so that way should have more sun. Because we've got such a big ivy covered cherry tree covering the garden, this way certainly offers more light. But looking down there, you can see, I mean, just look at those there. Perfect for propagation. Some little babies, but Unfortunately, they will be staying in. I say unfortunately, but this plant will be, again, a monstrous clump this year. Interestingly to see where I've left the old flower spikes there on perfectly moist ground after a moist and mild winter, there's not a single sign of any germination. Just gonna leave that there. So I'll just show you that view one more time before the gunners start rapidly growing away. As you can see, from relatively modest origins, within a month or so, these will be well onto leafing up. Huge, vivid green leaves rising up towards the sky. And then before long, most of this clearing will be taken up by the colossal display. Gunner one there, Gunner two, the biggest and best there, and then Gunner three here. So even though in theory, it looks like they've got plenty of space, if you're planting a young plant, you'd assume this will be just fine. They really are a plant which absolutely supersedes any idea of how big you think they'll grow. They're massive, but I wouldn't have it any other way. But anyway, onto the next plant, the Musabaju. As you can see then, those Gunnera are well on with growing away this year. And as I probably mentioned in my Unleashing the Gunnera video last year, what I'll be doing for the next month or two going forwards is firstly keep an eye out for any frosts. If there's a frost forecast, I'll just be covering the plants with a couple layers of fleece, doing the best I can to cover the rapidly expanding leaves. And then secondly, in the next few weeks, I'll be giving them a good dose of slow release feed. Last year, I used a Vitax 6X feed, and I've got to say, I only fed it once through summer. So that magnificent growth that you saw late summer, early autumn was all down to one big dump of slow release feed. So really, I've got to say, I'll be trying that again this year. Highly recommended. And I'll put the link in the description below to the one that I used last year. A great feed, and I think it really ties in with the fact that for plants like Gunnera, Although in theory, a lot of food helps get big leaves, improving the soil really is the best thing you can do to set them up for the whole year long. And organic feeds that really help improve the structure and long-term fertility, they're definitely the way to do it. But anyway, now it's onto the banana, the musabashu. And this winter, I've done a bit of a compromise protection. So you might remember back in the 2022 winter, I just covered it with a couple of fleece bags and it wasn't enough. But still, I didn't want to go full on enclosure, build something up, fill it with straw. Honestly, I didn't have a time last year. So instead I've done a kind of compromise, which is basically make a small enclosure out of canes, pack it with fleece, and then use more fleece bags over the top. So we'll see what's happened. I was not expecting this. The plant is already growing away really rapidly. It's already pushing rollers out, it's amazing. So it's definitely clear that I used a lot more fleece than last winter, and it's certainly been worth it. And I think for all the people that are skeptical still that you can grow banana plants here in the UK, as long as you choose a hardy variety like Musabaju, I mean, look at this, it really is incredible. After a winter with minus six, persistent rain for months, cool, miserable gray weather for 
pretty much half the year and it's still growing away. And this is a plant that now we're in the second week of March. This, I mean, it's been growing since February. That really is incredible. I still won't necessarily feed this because I don't want it pushing out huge new leaves just yet. And in reality, with all this wind and storms that are probably still yet to come, they'll just get bashed up anyway. And another thing that I would consider is in this area here, I've got the eucalyptus there and my feather palm, the Boutia Aries Pater over there. I don't want to give them a nice big dose of nitrogen. It's still too early in the year for that. So let's get the rest of this fleece off and I'll give you a closer look. If you were here, you'd certainly be able to smell the distinctive herby aroma of Fritillaria imperialis, the crown imperial. It's definitely strong. I just got a shot of it as that wind picked up then. As you can see, I've got the variegated ones too. Less green, more decoration, and certainly the same pungent scent. I love it though. I think they're a fantastic plant. They're a plant which always seems to push up quite early, especially this year with the mild weather we had last month but they always seem to flower on time, but I'm looking forward to it. One of the most magnificent spring bulbs you can grow. But anyway, the Musa Baju, let me show you it in more detail. So as you can see, the experiment this winter has really paid off. Admittedly, this winter hasn't been the coldest one. Like I said, we only got down to around minus five or so, and there wasn't the same week long freeze that we had in the previous one but all the pseudostem height is there. I'm not having to chop anything back. But let me go for a few practical growing tips for your bananas. Firstly, if the top of the pseudostem is mushy, but is actually firm further down, then all you need to do is chop off the mushy bit. I won't be in a rush to do it, but certainly in the next few weeks or when you choose to unwrap it, find out where it's mushy at the top, chop it off, and that way you give the new rollers or leaves a chance to push through. And when it comes to the new leaves, as you can see here, the brown, those ones probably won't open, so I'll have to just chop all that brown off or help them unfurl. But don't worry about damage to the new leaves. You see so many posts on the Facebook groups in spring, new leaves pushing through and then get hit by the winds and end up ripped and torn to shreds like that one there. It's perfectly normal. I think it's especially important to remember that these first leaves that push through, they've been grown pretty much in the dark. The plant isn't really getting the nutrients properly at this time of year. So there's definitely gonna be vulnerable to damage from these late windy storms. So honestly, don't worry about it. I always think any intact banana leaves you can get really before mid to late May is a bonus, but I really am pleased to see it growing away this year. I honestly expected to have the shooter stems mostly keeping the height, but to have all that height and to have them already growing away here in my shady raw run off Lincolnshire garden, that's definitely a win. So I'm buzzing with that. But let's get on to the slightly more experimental banana. In the bed closest to the house, I've got another Musa Baju and then a Musa Tibet. So we'll see what that one looks like. But before that, a quick update on my Tetrapanax. This one here, I believe, is a Papyrifer Rex, one of the selective form with bigger leaves, more deeply divided, and in theory, the potential to be an even bigger monster. And I believe as well, this one is a Rex. So as you can see, the one on the left is growing away. The one on the right, it's starting, but it maybe got hit by that last frost we had. And we're now at the time of the year when plants like this, especially with this mild start we've had, really want to actually get growing away. So it's a bit of a tricky one. In theory, they are perfectly tough and hardy now. Now we're past the risk of any deep freezes and really hard frost. But it, the question is really, do you want to protect the new growth? And personally, with me only having a few small plants, I think I will. So what that means is whenever there's a frost forecast, anything close to or below freezing, I'll just cover the whole of these plants with a fleece bag or two. Ideally two, because then the actual leaves aren't touching the outer layer of the fleece. It gives them more protection that way. But then as soon as the risk of frost or cold has passed, I take them off and let the plants breathe again. But ultimately, if you've got a bigger plant or you don't have the time to protect a smaller one, I won't worry at all. As long as it's got a woody stem like this, and as long as it looks like it's made it through winter, it'll keep growing on just fine. And just like Fatsia, they might take a bit of damage to the new growing points, but ultimately it won't really matter over the next few months as they rapidly grow away. You might end up with them branching or splitting, but personally, I think it's worth the extra bit of time just to cover them at this time of year to get them through the last part of winter. But anyway, here we go. Two more ghostly figures are looming up here from this jungle path of the garden. That is my Musa Baju, and over that side is my Musa Tibet, which is a bit of an untested banana for me here. So we'll have a look and see what's inside them both. Mm. 
Oh dear. So, as you can see, mixed results, but not in the way that I expected. So, look at this front clump of Musabaju here, the same as the one that you've just seen. This clump hasn't handled the winter quite as well. And as you can see up here, this one, it's a little bit mushy at the top. It's still relatively firm, but I'm gonna be a little bit gentle with that. This shooter stem over here, yeah, that's, that's pretty much gone most of the way down. It's still firm there though, so, as I mentioned with the last plant, if this has happened to yours, chop it back there. But it really is interesting to see two versions, which in theory are the same plant, probably 20 meters, not even that apart from each other. This one, it's not started growing again yet. And most of the clump has done that, gone soft at the top, <laughs> which isn't ideal. But ultimately this banana here, there's so much competition in this bed that it's not the end of the world for it to be a little bit smaller, particularly with the Musa Tibet behind. But first, before I look at that, one question about Musa Baju. People ask about when the best time is to divide them. And generally speaking, I usually say in mid-autumn, before the weather gets cold, if you're gonna keep them in the greenhouse or polytunnel. Robin up there, singing its heart out, I think. <laughs> but I won't do it this time of year. I would certainly wait another month or two and that way everything's warmer, you've got more heat, whether it's in a polytunnel greenhouse or in the ground, and the more likely to grow away again rather than just rot. But excitingly, a Musa Tibet, which really was an experiment for me to grow outside, has made it through. And those stems, or shooter stems, they're firm. So that really is fantastic. Because although I made a video saying about insurance plants, how it's the best way, just splitting up and taking one part of the plant and keeping it safe in a polytunnel greenhouse, did I actually do that? No, I didn't. <laughs> so I really am pleased it's coming through. And as you can see there, there's actually the remainder of a leaf or potentially new one that's just starting to push through. So although it's not as far on as the bashu that you've saw previously, I really am happy with that. It's made it through, and more importantly, we've got that height. So one thing I might draw from this, if all other factors were the same, is that the two plants, this Tibet and the previous Baju we saw, that are actually protected with more layers of fleece, they've come through better. Whereas the one that just had pretty much one roll of fleece and a fleece bag over the top, it's not made it again. So there, if you want the result of my experiment, definitely it's worth putting the effort in with a bit of protection if you live in a colder part of the country or you suspect the winter isn't going to be a mild one. And just to give you a quick look at this border here, the day lilies, they're pushing through now. As you can see, my various weeds, they're certainly coming through. And the Persicaria, they're definitely the red dragon. Any sign of the sun and they're just growing away. Will they make it through without another frost? We will see. But once again, I'm very pleased to have this as a starting point. And what's that? It's sun, actual sun, amazing. As you can probably hear, everywhere around the garden now, the birds are singing their heads off. I can hear pigeons, doves, blackbirds, robins, thrushes, starlings, everything. It really is such an exciting time of year. And for me, today is when it begins. Unwrapping those big leaves, seeing that they've actually made it through winter and that they're ready to grow again, it really is exciting. And with those banana plants, I will just be keeping the fleece bags just to one hand in case we get a hard frost forecast or something like that. But touch wood now, hopefully we're on the home straight. I know having said that now, I've probably jinxed it a little bit, so sorry about that. But really, we can start looking forwards now. The big leaf plants that stay in the ground all year, they're starting to come alive. And now we can start thinking about the extra summer plants that really bring that lush tropical feel to our UK gardens. So thanks a lot for watching. Do you know what, that ah. sun's coming out. It's time for t-shirt weather. Yes, summer is here. <laughs> I know obviously by the time you're watching this, it'll be back to rain and everything, but it's t-shirt weather for me. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.